Star Wars Episode Nine presented a massive leap in the abilities of both Kylo Ren and Rey, while introducing abilities we have never seen before along the way. But just how powerful were each of these characters in comparison to their predecessors? In this breakdown, I will address Rey and Kylo's power, as well as their potential. In this movie, we learn that Kylo and Rey have formed a Force Dyad, allowing them to make deep mental and even physical connections with each other from great distances. Kylo and Darth Sidious allude to the fact that this bond makes Rey and Ben two halves of the same whole. They are one person in two different bodies. But for the sake of this discussion, we will treat the two as if they are separate, and then maybe we can evaluate the strength of the dyad in another video. I'll address Rey first, then move to Kylo. Midway through the movie, we discover that Rey's father was the son of Emperor Palpatine. We don't know if her mother has a significant Force-sensitive lineage, but Palpatine's blood alone is more than enough to make Rey a formidable opponent and we see this throughout episodes 7 and 8 as Rey performs stunts without any training that many Jedi are not even capable of, while also holding her own against Kylo Ren. After roughly a year of training between The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, Rey's abilities now dwarf most others. I don't think there's any disputing that she has established herself in the upper echelon of Force users at this point. However, I would still have to say that characters like Yoda, Anakin, Darth Sidious, Mace Windu, and Luke Skywalker rank above her, putting her on a similar level to others like Maul and Obi-Wan. Rey's raw strength in the Force may rival any of these characters I just named, but her ability to control such power is definitely not on the level of Yoda and Palpatine, nor are her lightsaber combat skills anywhere near theirs or Anakin's. As it stands right now, I would have to say that Rey's abilities are undeniably enough to place her in the top 10 Force users we have ever seen on screen, but I also think it's clear in this movie that she is still ascending. After all, she has only had one year of training, and definitely shows immaturity in her ability to control her anger when pushed. Not to mention that Darth Sidious does throw her and Ben around like ragdolls until the power of all the Jedi connect with her at once, which is more so a testament to the power of the Jedi versus the Sith than it is to Rey's power. Based on my interpretation of this film, it's made abundantly clear in this movie that Kylo is more skilled in the Force than Rey. It seems that she may have more potential based on everything we see in these three movies, but right now, Ben does outrank her. Every force bond they have in episode 9 is initiated by Kylo, indicating that he has more control over it than she does. Then as Rey pulls the ship that she believes is holding Chewie, Kylo begins to pull it back toward him. Rey feels herself losing this tug of war, which causes her to lose complete control of herself. In their force bond duel, which takes place both on Ren's ship and on Kijimi, Rey attacks Kylo as he effortlessly denies every attempt, while circling her with his back turned, indicating that he feels he has no reason to fear her. Then, Kylo decisively defeats her on the ruins of the Death Star, as Rey becomes fatigued and then collapses to her knees, right before Leia reaches out to him to stop her son from killing Rey. It's also pretty apparent that Ben's understanding of the Force is above Rey's, based on their own conversations. You're not doing this. The effort would kill you. It's Kylo who explains to Rey that they are a dyad, and he doesn't get this information from Palpatine, as the Sith Lord didn't even know the dyad existed until after he tried to kill them, and the strength of their bond reflected his power back onto him. I would also argue that Ben's power is symbolized more subtly when he is the first one to stand back up after their life is drained from their bodies in the final battle with the Emperor. Now, Ben being more powerful than Rey is not a slight to her in any way. This is the way it should have always been considering he is the one who spent the majority of his life being trained in the ways of the Force. Let's also not lose sight of the fact that these two also showed skills that we have never seen in these movies before when evaluating their power. The ability to stop a lightsaber attack with their mind and to freeze and or redirect blaster bolts back at their opponents are a few unique things that we see in The Rise of Skywalker. Yes, Ben does this in The Force Awakens too, but I'm just talking about the powers that are unique to these two characters. Rey is able to heal wounds with the Force, and Ben is actually able to bring Rey back to life, saving her from death, which is also a new ability, as we have only heard of this power once before when Sidious tells Anakin about Darth Plagueis the Wise. Although, it may also be true that Palpatine somehow resurrected himself now. Also, whether or not Ben Solo was actually dead at the end of this film, he did show he had the knowledge and ability to become a Force Ghost, a power very few have ever achieved. So at the end of this film, I would say Rey and Ben are both immensely powerful Force users. If I was giving them a number ranking, I would place them both within the top 10 for sure, with Ben possibly cracking the top 5. Remember that this evaluation is based on the two as individuals, when their power is not truly unlocked until we consider them one and the same. So an evaluation of Rey and Ben as one person would dramatically increase their power. 
But what are your guys' thoughts on this video? How powerful do you feel Ray and Ben are as individuals? And would you like to see a video where I consider the two of them to be one and reevaluate their skills? Maybe you guys would like to see a video where I rank my top 10 Force users. Let me know in the comments section below, and may the Force be with you always.